its history, tradition, and achievements, as well as building of camaraderie. As a symbol of continuity, I will ask the president of the mess to open our punch bowl with a bottle of grog, painstakingly extracted from the punch bowl at last year's event. <laughs> That particular, that particular bottle was then secreted away to a secure, nondescript location known only to those with the highest of security clearances. Over the course of the year, many staff members have reported hearing its faint call echoing through the empty hallways at night, begging to be released from its captivity. Tonight, its bittersweet memories and fine aroma will blend the old with the new. Mr. President, will you please add our first ingredient? On March 1st, 1776, 19-year-old Captain Alexander Hamilton began the organization of the new provincial artillery of the New York Provincial Artillery Company. This company fought with distinction through the Revolutionary War and was the only unit not deactivated following the war. For over 230 years of unbroken service, Hamilton's own now Battery Delta 1st Battalion 5th Field Artillery 1st Infantry Division has faithfully served the, the country and is distinguished as our Army's oldest unit. This unit boasts campaign streamers from every major conflict in American history except the Korean War. It has fought around the world from Vietnam and the Philippines to Europe, North Africa, and Southwest Asia. Always first, 1st Battalion, 5th Field Artillery has been an integral part of the 1st Infantry Division since 1917. In memory of the bitter cold winters endured by our soldiers during the American Revolution, we had a block of dry ice. After the Revolution, American soldiers fought on the frontier in Canada and in New Mexico, in Mexico. In 1861, war once again came to America. This time, it was brother against brother as the North fought against the South. The 4th U.S. Cavalry Regiment was called upon and her soldiers fought and died gallantly to preserve the Union. They fought at places called Bull Run, Mufabrizo, Chickamauga, and Antietam. Lieutenant Joseph Hedges earned the regiment's first Medal of Honor near Harpeth River, Tennessee. The 1st Squadron, 4th Cavalry, has been part of the 1st Division since 1964 and earned distinction in Vietnam and Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and continues that proud tradition today. To one of the soldiers of the blue and the gray, we add three ingredients. First, to represent the North, we will add the coffee grounds that kept them... Kept
kept the cold and hunger at bay. Next, to represent the South, we will add a twist of tobacco used to pass the quiet times among friends. And finally, we will add Kentucky bourbon to blend the other two into something that is neither northern nor southern, but American. With the nation reunited, soldiers returned to the frontier and in 1898 fought in Cuba, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines to defend American interests in the Spanish-American War. In 1916, then Major Robert R. McCormick served as an officer in the 1st Cavalry of the Illinois National Guard. His unit was mobilized to help stop border raids by the Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa. Six regiments involved in the Mexican punitive expedition later became America's first division when they were summoned to France in May 1917 for World War I. To honor our soldiers from the Indian Wars to the Mexican punitive expedition, we add mezcal with salt and lime. I'm told the makers tried desperately to rescue the worm when he fell into the vat, but he valiantly fought back with all his might it is my opinion that we let them stay there. On June 8, 1917, the 1st Expeditionary Division was activated into the United States Army. The first American artillery round fired in World War I came from Battery Charlie, 6th Field Artillery, in October 1917. The entire division then proved its mettle in May of 1918 at the Battle of Cantini. The attack was led by the 28th Infantry Regiment, the Black Lions of Cantini, so-called because of the Black Lion silhouette on the Heldrick Crest of Cantini. Our founder, Robert R. McCormick, was there, and he renamed this estate in, an, in honor of that battle. In November 1918, the division artillery was in Beaumont. After withdrawing from the front lines, two young lieutenants decided to visit a nearby town and discovered a cellar full of wine. Chateauneau de Pape, later to be named the division's wine, the men decided that it would be a shame to let the wine go to waste. So they immediately informed their commander with the armistice signed, the commander decided to download the reserve ammunition and upload the wine. The commanding general was quite upset, but decided what's done is done, and took the wine and distributed it among the officers' messes of the division. For the soldiers that fought gallantly in World War I, and the two lieutenants who secured the division's wine, we had a bottle of French red wine to the bunch. In 1942 and 43, the 1st Division fought its way across the harsh terrain of North Africa and onto the island of Sicily. This was the return to combat for the division against an old enemy with a renewed thirst for world domination. 
Our German and Italian enemies began to feel the agony of defeat at the hands of units like the 26th Infantry Regiment at places with names such as Oran, El Qatar, Gela, and Troina. We had Italian red wine to symbolize the sacrifice and heroism displayed by the big red one on the forbidding deserts, beaches, mountains, and valleys of the Mediterranean. Nineteen forty four ushered in the beginning of the end for the Nazi, for Nazi Germany. With the landings at Normandy on D Day, june sixth, nineteen forty four, among the division's finest hours, after the fierce fighting to establish a foothold on Omaha Beach, many first division soldiers looked for an elixir to calm their nerves. What they found was a local apple brandy called Calvados. Even today, veterans of the landings at Normandy will get a sparkle in their eye if you mention the sweet nectar. In their memory, we pour in a bottle of apple brandy. The subsequent, subsequent march into the German homeland was quickened by the use of armored vehicles and motorized infantry, at which the 1st Division excelled. To this lively brew, we contributed a bottle of fine Gewürztraminer wine, captured during the Rhineland campaign of the Second World War. Soldiers of the 1st Division, 745th Tank Battalion, purportedly liberated a case of these bottles from a wine cellar in Mannheim, occupied in 1944 by Hitler's niece. The case, now sadly depleted, resides in the climate-controlled haven of the decomposing foundations of an undisclosed building on Fort Riley, Kansas. The wine has a nose full of cloves and honey, reminiscent of the spice of close combat and the sweet taste of victory. It is most certainly a worthy addition to this noble brew. The Big Red One made its Cold War combat debut in 1965 when it deployed to Vietnam. Over the next five years, units like the 16th Infantry fought harrowing firefights against an elusive and determined enemy in such operations as Abilene, Setterfields, and Junction City. The division also helped defeat the enemy's devastating attack known as the Tet Offensive in 1968. When the division finally returned home, its soldiers had earned 11 medals of honor and countless other awards for heroism and bravery. Often, the only respite from these long days in the jungles along Highway 13 was a single cold beer at the main firebase. In honor of the blood and sweat spilled into the Vietnamese countryside, we had this a bottle of tiger beer. <laughs> On the morning of February 24th, 1991, the Big Red One spearheaded Operation Desert Storm the armored attack into Iraq, leading the way for the 7th Corps. The division smashed into the Iraqi 25th Infantry Division, taking over 2,500 prisoners. Four days later, at 8 a.m., the war was over. The Big Red One had fought through 260 kilometers of enemy-held te territory in 100 hours, destroying over 1,000 enemy vehicles and taking 11,400 prisoners. Mechanized vehicles engaged in combat across the desert left the sand soaked with engine fluids. In honor of our Desert Storm veterans, we will add sand mixed with a bottle of hydraulic fluid. From 1996 through 2000, 
The Big Red One performed peacekeeping operations in Bosnia, Herzegovina, Macedonia, and Kosovo, supporting United Nations and NATO efforts to bring peace to those troubled former communist states. Often, on the very edge of war, our soldiers braved many dangers to, claim, to calm hostile neighbors, enforce international law, and relieve stricken people. To represent the division service in the Balkans and the soldiers who were deployed there, we had a local plum brandy known as Slivovitz. Most recently, in 2003, the division again answered the call to duty, this time in Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. From the beginning, elements of the 1st Division have been involved in operations across central and northern Iraq, including the cities of Baghdad, An Najaf, Tikrit, and Fallujah. Tonight, the headquarters of the 1st Infantry Division has just returned from its base in Basra, Iraq. A new generation of soldiers is carrying the legacy of this great division and the American soldier into a new era. To represent this modern era, we look to the hospitality-based cultures in which our soldiers find themselves. The drinking of tea is a way to cement friendships and secure agreements among allies. In memory of those operations, we will add tea. Before we can partake of the punch, we must ensure it is fit for consumption. To test our beverage, I call forward the most expendable member of our museum staff, Bill Brewster. <laughs> you got to get a good taste. You do know he's a Packer fan. I can't help you. Come on, Laura. Ah, yes. <laughs> Sorry. Beverage must be able to sustain itself if we are to present it to the good people here tonight. <laughs> what would that be? We seem to have forgotten an important part of our fine division's history. To represent the troops of the supply trains of World War I, the support battalions of World War II, the Division Support Command of Vietnam and Desert Storm, and today's 1st Sustainment Brigade, 
They keep our vehicles running, our weapons firing, and our soldiers at the cutting edge of battle. And for them, we will add a crucial lubricant to maintain and sustain our punch to the very end. or a Navy base, well, they're 
and reserve soldiers who are not on that base and don't have the benefit of the camaraderie of other people in the same position, the infrastructure that goes with that. And so it's a, a very, very small token of our appreciation to Colonel Peterson, but I'd like the three married soldiers, J.D. has a bouquet of flowers, and I'd like each of you guys to pick them up after this, take them home to your wife, and tell her uh, how much we appreciate the service she provided while you guys are in that